Welcome back to the Coins and Connections podcast, where we explore all things books, business, and bullshit. My favorite bees. I'm your host, the fairy coin mother, Sinquanta Cox Smith of www.sinquantacoxsmith.com. Now let's get into today's episode. Sweet love, and my mind is so confusing. What would be that special one? Every day I try to find you. Another day, another podcast episode. Hey guys, welcome back to the Coins and Connections podcast, episode 184. It is your girl, Sinquanta Cox Smith. Smile for me. What I am trying to do, I am just trying to bridge the gap between my YouTube audience and my podcasters. If you are not familiar with the term smile for me, you have not been following me for a very long time. If you are familiar and you catch yourself saying smile for me or you catch yourself smiling, you might be an OG. You might remember when my kids had no teeth, when we lived in Savannah, when we lived in Kansas, and when we lived in Virginia. We've been around. And it's almost that time to scrap up these boxes and get the heck on to a new state. Don't ask because you're not coming. Today, I want to jump into the topic. I want to talk about how podcasting has changed. And yes, I'm a podcaster. I won't say that I completely changed. What I have done is made sure that my show now is developed a little better. I've created video content with my podcast. I've grown guests on, I've done solo, I've taught, like I've, you know, done different things to see what works the best. At this point, I'm at a standstill because at one point my podcast was getting like 500 plus downloads every week. And I don't know if that was because I would do 10 episodes and take a break, but I've always pretty much published on Fridays. So that hasn't really changed. I'm just in this space of trying to figure it out. Was there a step that I'm missing? Is there something that I used to do that I no longer do anymore? I'm just trying to figure it out. One of the steps that I didn't realize I wasn't doing was sharing my podcast. And that's completely my fault. The other thing that I realized I stopped doing, I stopped pushing my podcast to my website. So I used to have every single episode every week with episode notes, a link to the episode. And my website does get a lot of day-to-day traffic. So I was like, is this a step that I'm missing? I did try to go back and put up a few. I think I missed the last couple because it has to be something that comes back into rotation for me to, for me to remember to consistently do it. I have that on my to-do list for every time I record a podcast and to make sure I keep up with doing that as well for the weekly recap so i've openly mentioned before i have a goal of 200 episodes after that 200 episodes i don't know (laughs) i have to cross that bridge when i get there but i mention it again because we are almost at 185 episodes and 15 gonna sneak up on us quick all right we gonna be at 200 and we're like oh my gosh we did it and i felt so much joy reaching a hundred podcast episodes and we probably make 200 before we actually get to 200 just because i've re-uploaded some episodes i have did some bonuses and there's a lot of other things that are in between that makes this a podcast that has more so while i just ran my mouth for about five minutes about not too much about podcasting i I feel like things are starting to become a monkey and pony show. There are a plethora of sex podcasts, okay? I listen to Horrible Decisions, and then I listen to Mostly Noted, and then we had sex. I also listen to Mila and, oh, Bad Moms, Good Choices. Those are like my top three And when it comes to like sex type podcasts. Every now and then, I'll listen to an episode of Angela Yee, her lipstick lipstick, whatever. And I'll listen to that. But that's about as much sex talk (laughs) that I can take on a podcast because every show on TV, every five minutes, someone is getting their back blown out or some kind of psychosexual thing is going on. And it is really like, look, I get enough. 
But yeah, dang, I can't even watch a regular show with my child without feeling like, is this an adult show? Like, the, it's so bad that all the teen shows, they're making out, they're talking about sex, they're saying things. And now it makes me understand why I see kids talk the way they talk. We didn't have a lot of sex thrown at us. So it made us curious. They have all the sex thrown at them. So they talk about the sex. <laughs> and that I have to have those conversations earlier with my kids because it is literally everywhere. And it has infiltrated the podcast space. Not only do I listen to those couple of sex podcasts, I listen to a lot of true crimes. I like scammer stories. I like the really good storytelling podcast. I tried to do that and I was like, let me record one to see if I am good at storytelling. No, I'm good at running my mouth. And that's about it. I also wanted to do a case study on sexual content because I want to test the theory of when people can no longer be authentic when creating, they say, oh, let's just talk about sex. Everybody talks about sex because that's what's left then I just want to see, is this something that is easy to talk about? And people who are influenced to talk about sex on a podcast, if there's a tasteful way to do it and there's a distasteful way to do it. There was one podcast that I listened because they had features from some people that I enjoy and it was just done very distasteful. And then to see the faces behind the sex podcast, I was like, ain't nobody fucking them. <laughs> Cause what? But that's my opinion. Another thing is when it comes to podcasting with more than one person, I hate listening to a podcast when they are fighting to speak. Everyone is trying to speak at the same time. And it just is very off-putting because you could consistently hear someone fighting to talk and the other person refuses to, to stop their thought. And in some instances, it's right. But then when they try to get it again, it just keeps going. And then it just does not make for pleasant listening. One thing I know for sure is I talk about things that I know people don't understand. But I'm not making content for people to understand. I'm making content for people who want to be in this industry of print on demand, of all things books and business and anyone who can relate to the military spouse lifestyle and to be an entrepreneur and to be a stay at home mom and to just be a black woman in general. That's who I'm talking about. Many people would love for me to exaggerate my numbers instead of telling it like it really is. But I think we have enough people doing that, right? We have enough people photoshopping numbers to get clicks. We have enough people sharing income reports that may or may not be true. We have enough of that. I want to be able to have a perspective of, oh, that's not too far attainable. Like I can attain that. I don't want anyone to ever come to my page and see nothing but sh like I, I shot straight to the top. I want you to be able to read the story of where I started, where I'm going. Yep, I fell off or I failed for that, but I picked right back up and I kept going. That is the story I want to tell because it's the truth. So it's so easy to lie, but for some, it's very hard to tell the truth. Lies can be entertaining. <laughs> when the lie is so big, the truth, no one wants to hear. But in five years, I want to know that I encourage you. I want to know that you learned from me and I want to know that I motivated you into doing stuff. Let's talk about how podcasting has really changed. I don't know how old you are, but Blog Talk Radio was a thing, right? We had people on Blog Talk Radio. I've done radio press. I've done radio interviews and shows with the company. Like I have been there. I have been a part of that. And this was like back in 2016, 2017. I had my radio run. I wanted to be on the radio. I wanted to be a VJ. Hey, y'all, it's your girl, cute, honey. Like, I wanted to do that, right? Then we have radio shows that broadcast FM and AM. We have TV talk shows. Now, all of these are nationally syndicated shows. And then now we have podcasts. 
And we brought podcasts into it where anyone can be a podcaster. Anyone can share their opinion, which made it a point for people to create podcast forward companies that produce podcast shows. They give gongs. So now the money is really behind it. As for being on the radio, you held some type of notoriety. Like you, you held some type of weight knowing that you were hired to speak on the radio to millions in different cities and different states. And now we have people who can, like me, who can just pull up a mic and some equipment that they got off Amazon, pull up some audio, do a little editing, pop up in a video and produce my own podcast in my home. That's how podcasting has changed. Some of us will take it serious. Some of us will rent a studio. Some of us will do guests. Some of us will make millions from doing this at home. And then we also have celebrities who are now doing their own interviews. They're hosting their own podcasts where they choose to talk about what they wanted to talk about. Before they were their interviewee, and now they become the interviewer. And now we are getting to hear way more opinions than we want. <laughs> we are starting to see the real side of some celebrities because they can't keep that Hollywood front up for too long before their real thoughts and opinions show and they are on a track to get canceled. There's just so much about it that has changed. I've taken time off. I've taken breaks. But what I really love is that I have a story to tell about where I am in the print-on-demand industry. I have a mission so others can create print-on-demand success. Sharing through my lens is like leaving my little footprint or leaving a book that I didn't have to write to others who may come behind me 10 years later. The industry of print on demand is going to change, but leaving a blueprint, which is pretty much at this point fail proof for me because I just began money from just places and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's old. And the passive income part of it is what brings me joy because I want to leave a print on demand business for my kids, among other things. My son will be a senior next year and he'll be graduating high school. Why not give him a business, a fully functional business and everything he needs to succeed? Whether he goes to college, whether it's stuff he does in his spare time, whether he goes in the military, whether he starts his additional business, creating something for him to then in return be able to maintain or just reap the benefits of his mom's hard work. Because I know I'm gonna create this brand. I'm gonna do the logo. I got him set up on all accounts. Like I am handing him a business on a thumb drive. There'll be videos of me showing him exactly how to run his business. And this is what I feel can be the best part of generational wealth that I can pass down to my children. They can take over my YouTube channel. They can run my podcast if that's what they want to do. I want to provide them an already engaged audience and Provide their perspective, okay? I've been doing this long enough. They've watched me. That's just what I wanted to talk about. It's more of a, like a rant and then some of my opinions. But I want to know your thoughts on podcasting. Have you thought about it? If you have, what would your podcast be? What type of voice will you want to be in the podcasting industry? Are you going to be a storyteller? Are you going to be someone who advocates for different things, different laws, a political podcast? Are you a lawyer that wants to do case studies on trademarks or just the murder case? That was crazy. We don't talk about that. We don't talk about it. But yeah, just like, 
I really want to know where it can go. They're already having podcast festivals. There's podcast stages at the Roots Con at the Roots Conference or Concert Festival or whatever. Yeah, it's very forward thinking, and of course, the of course the people who have been in the game longer, um, most of the time, starts to reap starts to reap the benefits faster. But then people who have but then people who have built-in audiences do well as well. Yeah, that was my little thing today. I started off with a little singing. And I'm back in my office. I'm back trying to just do more videos. But I feel like my years always start like mer March. Um, after taking off so much time in December. It's, oh girl, you need more time off. And then more time turns in. Yay, let's start working on March 1st. And by then, I'm well refreshed. I've had time to create, think, and just map out my game plan. Yeah, my year started on March, and they end on December. No, on no November. They end in November. I take a three-month vacation. Regardless if I still upload stuff, most of the times I have stuff in place and scheduled through all those months because I'm crazy like that. But yeah, until next time. Can I run to Onani Love? Talk to you guys next week. Bye. Thank you so much for listening and subscribing to the Coins and Connections podcast. Don't forget to leave a review and join the conversation over on Facebook and Instagram using the hashtag Coins and Connections. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Cinquanta Cox Smith and at Coins and Connections. You can shop all merch at www.coinsandconnections.com. I love you more than I love this podcast. Peace.